in my opinion, some of these big businesses are trying to do is they're really trying to grab our attention. And, you know, that's why they call it clickbait. And, you know, every, you know, even if you're, if you click once and you get to a news article that you're interested in reading, what's the likelihood that you actually read all the way to the end before finding something, you know, not even a 10th of the way down that you're going to click on and it takes you to something else. And every one of those clicks is, 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 is money that they, that they make, you know, a little advertising money here and there. They're trying to grab your attention, you know, here, okay, you clicked on this, you know, just pay it, just watch, right? When you click on a, on an article that you wish to read, um, how your attention gets drawn to the left, to the right, they, even in the middle of the article, right? There's something flashing, like it's splitting the article in half. And there's something flashing, right? Saying, hey, click on this. You know, don't finish reading the article. We already got you on this page. Now go to this page and go to that page. Um, it's sort of like you already paid for the ticket. We already got your money that way. Uh, so now, you know, pay us uh, for, um, for this or use our app to do this or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, it's very, you know, very, very common. And now I think with virtual reality coming out and, you know, this whole concept of the metaverse, um, even Facebook changing their name to meta, uh, it's all about um, grabbing our attention, grabbing our attention and create, you know, how are we, how, how are these companies creating a universe that our attention is going to be directed at their company, either providing them uh, with advertising dollars or actual dollars that we're paying to them, um, but it's going to be all based on attention, you know, where our attention is going, how our attention is scanning. And with this, you know, with the whole metaverse, they're going to be able to scan where our pupils are facing, for instance. They're going to, you know, they're going to, oh, he's, he's, you know, he's looking over to the left, which means that, you know, there might be something. And then the whole thing is going to sort of shift over. Uh, and our brains are not going to be able to tell the difference. We're going to, we're going to get into such a routine with this that you know um uh the first thing we i i can guarantee you you know come talk to me in 20 years uh the first thing that some people will do when they wake up in the morning is put on their metaverse goggles <laughs> put on their meta they wake up in the morning and they're like oh Here's the world I live in, but what's the world that, you know, what's the metaverse? What's the world that I've created virtually with the help of Facebook or Google or you put on your metaverse goggles and you might even go to work because your work might be in the metaverse. <laughs> and you're probably going to be get paid in cryptocurrency through the metaverse or some sort of uh, digital currency, whether it's the US digital currency. So it's going to be a, a, you know, it's going to be a pull of our attention. And that's exactly, you know, wherever you are, download our app. I mean, I see kids, for instance, who are going to a little league baseball game, and they're watching their friends play baseball. And yet they're on their little iPhone, playing a video game baseball. Right. And all they're doing is they're clicking little things, um, but it goes by much faster. Uh, there's electrical stimulus is coming through into the into the eyes and they can't even pay attention to the um, to the Little League game because it's not exciting. And every five minutes when maybe somebody gets a strikeout or, you know, hits a hit, they look up, they see the hit or they miss it and they just see their friend, you know, rounding first base and then they go back to their little game. And you see it in the parents, you know, the parents are busy doing their, their thing. I don't, it is what it is. Um, well, I just had one of my colleagues who teaches mindfulness and she just got a, um, she actually just got a job at, at a, uh, at a public school district. 
So she's going to be creating a whole like mindfulness uh, program and routine. So, so it is expanding. Um, hopefully we're noticing it, but you know, the other, the other side is also equally as powerful, let's say. And so we, like you said, like we need to learn how to, um, how to abide in it all because there are some benefits to virtual reality. Um, and we just need to learn how to, again, that there are times, right? And we keep on saying this, there are times where something's gonna come out from external and grab our attention. And that we still know that we have the choice of where to place our attention. And if we feel as if, you know, if we get so sucked into something that we lose that ability to choose, that we feel like, oh, you know, uh, I'm in front of the TV and I just can't move. Like I've been here for six hours. <laughs> well, that has just sucked you in, right? That's just like, and, and, and is that what you wanted or were you just wanting to watch, you know, a half hour show that then became six hours? Um, and so again, it's not that any one of these things is technically bad. It's just the amount of, of, of energy that's going towards it. That's really, and, and our, our lack of ability to be aware that we still have the choice of where we place our attention, right? Where are you placing your attention and ask that to yourself, ask that to your kids, ask that to your significant other or partner when you're having dinner, right? What are you paying attention to? You know, I see you always checking your phone. You know, you're looking down at your lap. Oh, I'm watching the game on my lap. Well, I don't want that. <laughs> like you said, like, I don't want to go out to dinner. If, yeah, okay, the phone's not on the table, but it's on your lap and you're constantly doing this. Where's your energy going? Right. And so ask that to yourself. What am I paying attention to? And is that what I want to be paying attention to? If it is, great. But you're actually making then that choice and it becomes a conscious choice by you. Um, you know, and if you're in relationship with somebody, then you need to decide, well, what are they paying attention to, right? What are you paying attention to? Oh, well, you keep on paying attention to the football game. And, and therefore, this is not a time to, you know, even though you think you can be relational, let's say, uh, your relationship is more with the television set that's showing the football game than it is to me. Um, or whatever it might be. So really good questions to ask, you know, what am I paying attention to? Is that what I want to be paying attention to? Um, and if it is, um, good, right? Make up that. Yep. Yep. And catching yourself when you're doing things like that is also, you know, like, wow, here I am at the, you know, at the, uh, at whatever game or here I am at dinner and I'm sending a text to somebody else, right? Um, why are, you know, what's the, what's the reason behind it? Um, excellent. We did mindfulness of sound last session, mindfulness of sound. Uh, we listened to the soundscape that was present. Uh, that's always a real favorite of mine. Uh, because it's uh, it can be neutral. Um, sound is present at all times. Uh, the sound that we hear is the present moment. And so if we're listening to the sounds that occur in the moment, we are listening to the present moment. We're paying attention to the present moment. Uh, and we can also use it as a way of noticing our reactions two sounds that we hear and how close how how quickly we are to interpret the sounds and to judge them uh, oh that's the garbage carrier or whatever it is or the garbage truck or that's a cat meowing or a dog barking or a bird chirping and how quickly we are to judge them and assess them as oh i like that sound Ooh, i don't like that sound a few examples were given about construction you know, is the bet is the construction sound good when it's your own construction and you know that you're expanding your apartment or home versus your neighbor's construction? Oh my God, stop that sound! All right, where it's probably the exact same sound, but the the circumstance around that sound creates then our reaction to it, which then creates our experience around it, and just simply seeing, oh, it's just a sound. 
it's just a sound and then you utilizing that as then the anchor to the present moment um one of the things we mentioned and that's what we're going to do today is uh you know one of the things we mentioned about sound is um you can start to listen of course to the sounds around you right the sounds that are being generated you can turn on your phone or your speaker or your you know music and create sounds right we have the we we have the technology to do that right hey you know i want to really i want to listen to this um to this sound to this music uh and we can also generate sounds ourselves we can generate sounds ourselves singing whistling um humming right, whatever it might be um And so noticing, right, again, just like with anything, when we expose ourselves to certain sounds, noticing our, uh, our experience of those sounds, does it, does it, does a sound make us more stressed or more relaxed? Just, just inherently, right? What are the, uh, what are the, what is the mental activity that occurs when we hear the sound or that when, when we generate a sound? Um, whether we're singing or uh, or humming or listening to music. Uh, they, they've done a lot of research on sound. Uh, for instance, somebody, uh, Annette mentioned uh, Parkinson's, and some people with Parkinson's have uh, what, what, you know, it's called a, a, a shuffling gait. They, they, they shuffle their feet. Uh, they have a hard time taking steps. And they shuffle their feet and um, and they realized that if they used a metronome that had a metronome is um, something that is used in music to keep a beat right um, it, it it has a sound associated to it and it'll keep a beat and you can direct the metronome to be as quickly or as slow as you want it to be in essence to some degree, of course, but, but it will have sort of a tick sound. Tick, 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 tick. Um, and for people learning music or, you know, it, 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 it helps in terms of keeping one on on pace with the music, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what they noticed is that if they use a metronome and find the right interval, of ticks for people who have parkinson's that they listen to the tick and they start stepping with the tick without shuffling and so they actually have now like walkers with metronomes on them um so something is happening acoustically right that is creating an experience for them neurologically which can be very interesting. Um, you may have the reaction, right? Have you ever heard a song and uh, started crying, brought up emotions, or even getting goosebumps on your, right? You hear a song and I've never heard this song before. And all of a sudden you get goosebumps, right? Called pilo erection. Right? It's an activation of the nervous system, right? get goosebumps. Ooh, wow. Something's the sound is affecting you neurologically. All right. Um, I do recommend if you are semi acoustic and you listen to things and it, and it makes and it does affect you. I do recommend creating like a, 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 a playlist. Like this is my relaxation playlist. This is my um, you know, joy uh, creating playlist. This is my activation playlist, right? Um, when my son goes to play soccer, for instance, he likes to listen to um, Thunderstruck by ACDC. <laughs> it gets him, it, it, it fires him up, right? It probably wouldn't be appropriate to maybe play something by 
uh, you know, Adele on for him, right? Um, it just doesn't do the same. He might like the song, but it's just like, ah, oh, this is more, you know, I'm feeling more, uh, more, more soft and maybe more emotional here, um, you know. But creating these things for yourself, like, hey, you know, I need to activate my energy a little bit. What music do I play? Right? Is there anything that I can play that uh, that can can help? Of course, we've done all the other things, right? We've done the breath work and all that, all those other things. Um, one of the things that you may notice yourself doing is you may notice yourself humming to yourself, right? Like as you're going along your day, maybe you're driving, maybe you're actually washing the dishes, um, maybe you're unloading the laundry, maybe you are, uh, maybe you actually just got into an argument with somebody, um, a loved one, a family member, or something like that, and you notice yourself humming. <laughs> And it doesn't have to be a song or right? how many people have just hummed like whatever note comes to you, right? It doesn't really matter. Maybe you heard it. Maybe it was a song. Maybe it is a tune to a song. But haven't you just hummed notes that just come naturally to you? Like, la, 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 la. Right? I'm using my tongue now, not humming, but uh, that you may notice yourself actually sort of doing that. And there's actually a lot of really good research that's coming out on the benefits of humming. And the reason I bring this up in, in the mindfulness class is because um, we did sound, but now we can do, uh, we can actually generate the sound that we are paying attention to. And notice the resonance and vibration that the hum is generating in our vocal cords that the hum is generating in our neck uh in the muscles of the neck in the in the fascia in the in the connective tissue of our neck and the cool part about this is actually noticing for instance where the sound is coming from and all the um, all the neurological structures that go through the neck that may be affected by it. So just anatomically, for instance, uh, the vocal cords are down here, and right net literally right next to the vocal cords, okay, is the vagus nerve. It is cranial nerve number ten that I've spoken much about. Right? What does the vagus nerve control? The vagus nerve controls the parasympathetic nervous system. It is the main nerve of the parasympathetic nervous system. That's the rest and digest nervous system. All right? We've talked a lot about increasing vagal tone. Right? Increasing vagal tone. That vagus, the, the nerve is like a string on a guitar. If the string on the guitar is limp or loose right and you go and you pluck it what kind of sound comes from it you might get a dink right if it's really loose as you start to tighten the string on the guitar what happens all of a sudden you went ding and then you tighten it more ding tighten it more ding tighten it more ding Right now you're toning the tone, the tone of the string is increasing. Okay, so it has more uh, reactivity. It's, it's more uh, uh, able to function. It's more able to give a tone. If the string is so limp and you pluck it, you might get no tone whatsoever. And so the vagus nerve comes down through here. And can you imagine? Your humming or the words that you use actually activating the vagus nerve? Because it's right here. It's literally like 
a, 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 a string on a guitar that if you activate it, if you move it or touch it, it activates it. And so with our own sound, we're actually able to affect the vagus nerve, right? And so there's a lot of science actually in, um, in, in this. Uh, there's a good article on, on the benefits of humming um, that I pulled out here. Uh, first of all, it helps in breathing. Okay. Um, and why does it help in breathing? Well, uh, a number of things. We help, it helps us clear the airway passages. If we have mucus and we try humming, the hum, the vibration of the hum can actually, um, can actually break off some of the mucus that's stuck in the airways. Okay. Um, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system from the vagus nerve. It has been shown to reduce blood pressure and heart rate um, through, all right, through uh, the production of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide. Uh, we've talked a little bit about nitric oxide uh, in the past, but what is nitric oxide? Nitric oxide is essentially it's a gas um that is uh that is present in our body and what it does is it is it is it dilates our blood vessels so it makes our blood vessels bigger and therefore we can get increased blood to various parts of the body but when we dilate our blood vessels we cause our blood pressure to go down so imagine right by humming you are naturally increasing nitric oxide levels in your blood nitric oxide levels in your blood um, humming has been shown to uh, directly stimulate the vagus nerve it creates a vibration that stimulates the vagus nerve and can increase your vagal tone. That's exactly what we talked about. When you help increase your vagus nerve and your vagal tone, uh, what are you doing? You're helping bringing balance to your nervous system, right? Again, that's that building that zone of tolerance that we've talked about in the past, right? That most of us are coming from a very sympathetically driven state and we don't really exercise the parasympathetic. And so by simply humming, we are actually exercising that parasympathetic activity. So we're bringing a balance to our nervous system, bringing a balance to our nervous system, right? Which can be very powerful. We've talked about that balance in terms of whether or not that's activating the vagus nerve, increasing vagal tone. And when we increase vagal tone, uh, we can have increased heart rate variability. Increased heart rate variability. That increased heart rate variability is the natural variability, right, of our heart rate to, uh, to increase when we breathe in and decrease when we breathe out, increase when we breathe in, decrease when we breathe out, like a sign, like a sinusoidal wave. The other thing that if you were, if you listen to my talk on the breath, right, is this, um, is, is that if we were to deconstruct the breath again, the exhale seems to be more of a parasympathetic activity. So the exhale seems to be more of a parasympathetic activity. And so by humming, we are increasing the length of the exhale. We're increasing most of the time, for instance, you'll take an inhale and then you'll hum. And if you were to time yourself, the inhale would be like three seconds and the exhale would be like eight. But your exhale is the hum. 
right? So you're increasing that exhale response. So what are you doing then? Not only are you breathing, you're activating the vagus nerve through humming, you're causing a resonance in your neck and in your tissues. Um, you can listen to the hum. Wow, listening, listening to the, your own to the own generation of notes, right? That you're making. Increasing nitric oxide, causing your blood pressure to decrease a little bit. Increasing vagus turn, vagus tone, having nice rhythmic increase and in, and decrease in your in your heart rate variability okay. all that from humming as well as increasing your expiration that's also increasing your parasympathetic activity all right so it's just that prolonging it's tricking your system into prolonging your expiration without having to like You just hum. All right. Okay. Um, and so there's many ways of practicing it. Uh, we're going to do it. Um, and uh, there's probably, you know, YouTube videos on this on, you know, humming. Um, I would recommend if this uh, resonates with you. Well, if it doesn't reckon, resonate with you, then you can throw it out the window. It's fine. Um, if it does resonate with you. You know, as you're doing some chores today, hum, just bring it in. As you go for a walk, hum. As you are uh, washing a nice fresh carrot or an apple that you're going to eat, hum. And just see how you feel. See how you feel. Um, all right, so that's going to be our practice. Um, if you're in a group or you're with somebody, uh, you can still hum. Um, you can hum at whatever sound intensity volume you would like to. Okay. I'm going to add a little component into it if you wish to, which is going to be at some point, I may ask you to Put your fingers in your ears or cup your ears so that you actually are hearing the sounds as they resonate through your body and just see how that sounds to you okay so with that let's go into our practice Okay, so let's find a comfortable posture. A posture you will feel relaxed yet alert. Closing your eyes if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, if not having a soft downward gaze. And taking two or three deep breaths and really bringing yourself to the present moment. Allowing any stress or tension. See if you can exhale it, slightly decreasing any stress or tension that may be present for you with your breath as you breathe out. And first, bringing your attention to your anchor. Your anchor is a place that you feel you can direct your attention to. That you feel safer.
And as your mind wanders, simply bringing your mind back to your anchor. As you're choosing to pay attention to your anchor. Now for this practice, bringing in a humming sound. The humming sound can be any note or sound that comes authentically to you. As you inhale, gently and softly, creating a humming sound. It can be a single note. It can be a musical tone. It could be whatever spontaneously arises for you. You can change it as you feel appropriate. And with the inhale, simply humming as we exhale. It can be a single note, a combination of notes. Is there a sound or tone that resonates with you? With each inhale, inhaling in, and with each exhale, closing our mouth and humming. Any tone, even change tones and see how it affects you. Can you notice the resonance through your neck? Can you listen to the sound of your humming? And now, if you wish, taking your fingers and closing your ears, trying to block off the sound 
that's coming from the air, the environment, and humming to yourself. Closing your ears and noticing how you notice the vibrations through your tissues. Breathing in and out as you breathe out, humming a tune to yourself. Noticing the resonance, hearing the sound of your hum as it goes through your tissues and gets to your ears. And just noting what that is like for you. Seeing how long you can hold the exhale as you hum. Can you extend it five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds? And if you wish, relaxing your hands. Or if you like that experience, keeping your ears closed. Now bringing your attention back to your anchor. And just noting how you feel. How was this humming exercise for you? Now taking two or three deep breaths. Opening your eyes if your eyes were closed. Stretching if you feel like you need to stretch. And just taking a moment to reflect on this practice. <laughs> 